River Schooling by Gilbert Byron John has never studied Greek, but he knows the Chesapeake, broad bay and river reach, low marsh and sandy beach, yellow cliffs and harbors deep, where the soft crab hides in a cell, where the sunfish digs his well, wild duck flight and terrapin shell, tall lighthouse and buoy bell, strange stories the watermen tell. He has never studied angles obtuse, nor how to prove the hypotenuse. Yet he has watched the flying goose, the bellying sails, and the jib sheets loose, inscribed in a circle of living blues. A sculling oar will write for John, greater poetry than any one. Searching scholar or worldly don, he has a personal kind of knowledge. Can this be taught in any college? 1937 Chesapeake Calendar by Gilbert Byron The Ealer comes early in April, bateau with the drums of pistons firing. Does he hear cold springs desiring? Tarry pot and mananos, that's all he's got. Still the note of the fishhawk lingers in his rigid throat. The gaunt man treads the quiet cove where the peeler sheds. His hair and eyes and clever mesh net them by surprise. He studied the creeks for sixty years, knows old Chesapeake's natural laws and the color of the soft crab's claws. The fog of fall bring the proger and the black duck's call, in tune with the north wind and the bitter loon. Crouched in the marsh he finds freedom, hiding with the harsh, often to lack, still to fan, a small fire in the shack. Hip-booted men with long tongs Come to the cove again, rake the bar of oysters bare, yet seldom the surface mar. Men who never wrote a line are the greatest poets ever. Verses of love inscribed upon the bottom of the cove. 1947. Crab Talk by Gilbert Byron. Mama sent me to get the crabs from old Benny down on the creek where the shanty men seek happiness. He was mending eel pots, tar and twine, and deaf sane needle, chewing tobacco, spitting fine, whistling softly. He couldn't even see little boys like me. I heard them scratching in a covered basket. Shyly, I whispered, scared almost dead. Are those the crabs, Captain Ben? Rolling an eye, he grunted. Them's them. That's all he said. Them's them. 1939. These Chesapeake Men by Gilbert Byron. From Chesapeake Men I come, these men, a suntanned, quiet breed, with the eyes of English blue and faces lined with many a watch of sunlit waters. These men with cautious mouths and lazy stride, grizzled chinned, hip booted, oil skinned men. These men, they fear the Chesapeake, and yet they would not leave her. Down to the bay they go, top-sailed schooner, one-masted skipjack, canoe stern bug-eye, sails full, rowing a garvey, sculling a skiff, pulling a scow, and if they must, pounding along in a bateau powered with a one-cylinder engine. They seek the imperial shad and the lowly crab, the oyster, the weak fish, the turtle, the rockfish, the muskrat, the eel, the terrapin, diamond-backed, the clam, the bluefish, the wild duck, and food for their souls, which they sometimes find. In the calling of the wild duck, in the mating of the kingfisher, in the sloughing of the soft crab, in the softness of the water's touch, in the flight of the great blue heron, in the sculling of the oar, in the passing schools of fish, in the belly of the sail, in the hauling of the seine, in the taste of oysters raw, in the soaring fish hawk's wings, in the touch of the southwest wind, in the little waves that break, in the surge against the prow, in the cliffs of yellow clay, in the setting sun, in the quest of quiet harbor, in the Chesapeake. Gilbert Byron, 1936.